On the surface of today's most well-studied comet, we see fields of rubble everywhere. From great boulders down to gravel, sand, and dust, a surface littered with debris. What was not supposed to be there is just too boldly present. Why would an evaporating clump of ice and dust look more like the debris-strewn surface of Mars than any comet that scientists ever dared to dream of? The debris of 67P will force a confrontation with fundamental assumptions. For proponents of the electric comet, this is an open invitation to pose the unasked question. Is there a logical, evidence-based connection of the 67P rubble field to the origins of the comet, as to its birth as a comet? It's only reasonable to see the rubble field in such terms, because the tiny nuclei of comets are not appreciable attractors. The vast emptiness of interplanetary or interstellar space Picking up just one boulder in a million years would be a remarkable feat. But those who have explored the electric comet hypothesis know quite well what the rubble field is telling us. The comet was born in intense electrical exchanges between planets, when planets moved on vastly different paths than they move today. Within the Electric Universe community, researchers have, across several decades, explored pervasive evidence for planetary instability and violent close approaches of planets in the not-so-distant past. Seen in electrical terms, at its very birth, 67P was immersed in debris from a planetary surface. Even the nucleus itself looks like a jumble of debris on a larger scale. What we see are massively disordered and fractured blocks, constituted of rock and apparently no ice at all. Along the towering cliffs of 67P, we see the telltale signature of geological strata. Of course, that would be one of the first things to look for once the idea of violent removal from a planetary surface actually registers. The visible strata seen so clearly on separate fragments of 67P have no consistent alignment with that of other fragments. By all indications, massive blocks of material, some of it looking very much like mountainous terrain, were removed from a rocky planet to form a conglomerate on a grand scale. And that's what the electric comet hypothesis has always maintained. Crustal material torn from a planetary surface in intense electrical exchanges between planets with extreme selective heating and significant electrical fusing of the removed debris. It's the planetary origin of the comet that underpins our prediction of a host of complex silicate and clay materials that would not be expected or even possible in the deep freeze and vacuum of remote space. Such materials would be common on the surface of a rocky planet, in particular a planet in the habitable zone of the Sun. That's why we so eagerly await the reports on ejected dust from 67P. We expect the presence of complex crystalline structures, not the rudimentary stardust of popular comet theory, not the residue of an imagined nebular cloud a billion years ago, but rather the residue of planetary catastrophe recorded just a few thousand years ago by humans on Earth. 